Good evening to you. Mark Sato, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for the daytime, now it's evening, whatever, of October 2nd. You know, I recorded one late last night, early morning, and now I'm doing one here in the evening, trying to get caught up. I'll certainly have one in the morning tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, and it'll be back on the regular schedule or something like that. Um, nevertheless, I wanted to get one done tonight because there are some things to talk about. Let's start with a quick look at the current situation. Um, there is a severe weather outbreak happening, not directly related to the tropics, uh, but all that warm, humid air causing some problems up there in Pennsylvania. Uh, my wife was just in Pittsburgh. I'm glad that she is not any longer. I don't know if Pittsburgh directly was impacted. I haven't looked that deep. But it's good that she's back home, nevertheless. Uh, out west, we still are dealing with the remnants of Rosa that have brought record amounts of rainfall to parts of Arizona today, through last night and into today. And that has resulted in some flooding and some property damage. Not a widespread, you know, catastrophic event or anything like that. But some people inconvenienced. Some people have done things to inconvenience themselves. And it's, you know, caused some problems. I talked to a woman down uh, near Goodyear, actually out in just rural Maricopa County, and she was telling me that the wind and the rain were just driving last night, very similar to what she has seen in Tropical Storm and Hurricane videos. Uh, she said it was torrential, very heavy rain, and it was blowing sideways. And I actually saw a few trees that had been just laid over, in uh, probably indicating, you know, 25 to 35 mile per hour winds at times. I haven't seen any lightning and heard any thunder in any of these. There's been a few active thunderstorms, but uh, there was a period of time with some very, very heavy rain last night in parts of uh, Maricopa County and over towards Gila Bend and Ajo, or at, yeah, I think it's called Ajo, uh, A-J-O, and... Um, some of that's continuing, okay? And we're going to look at that closer here on the radar. So let's just jump to that. Bear with me. I'm kind of tired. Been out since about 5.30 this morning. A very productive day, but I'm exhausted. So this is the radar signature. A lot less lit up now than it was earlier today, but still some heavier rain in and around parts of the Phoenix metro area. And that has prompted another flash flood warning for the region. It actually looks like a polygon. Uh, a polygon. It is a polygon. Uh, it looks like the Pentagon polygon if you look at it on uh, National Weather Service, like on radar scope. It doesn't show up on this, but trust me, it looks like a Pentagon. All right, so that will continue over the next several hours. This moisture is lifting off to the north and east with time. Still some deep tropical moisture streaming out. From the Gulf of California, the leftover tropical feed from Rosa, but much less dense and extensive in terms of aerial coverage, which is good. Uh, looking at the satellite picture, you can see the low-level remnant circulation here of Rosa, somewhere in there, and not much deep convection or cold cloud tops, but you do see this big, vigorous upper-level low spinning off the California coast. This is the forcing and the energy that has come in to help kick Rosa up into the desert southwest and squeeze out a lot of that moisture. Next, we will be watching Hurricane Sergio down here. Going to move off to the west-northwest with time, and it might try to come back towards this way in about 10 to 12 days, something like that. In the Atlantic Basin, there's Leslie. At some point, probably going to become a hurricane and as I've been saying, it's just going to pad the score. Kind of like when you're getting beat, uh, your team is getting beat by, a, a, you know, we'll look, college basketball. Somebody's up 88 to 42, and then they're 96 to 44. You know, it's like, you're just padding the score, man, come on. Uh, that's what Leslie is going to do in the Atlantic Basin. Then we got to watch this area. Uh, we have this classic Central American gyre. Just a large area of low pressure rotating counterclockwise down here. Uh, energy that is trying to bundle 
similar to when we have typhoons form in the Pacific out of these giant 500-mile-wide pockets of energy, and that's what we've got. So this is going to take several days to come together, but when it does, there is the potential due to very high ocean heat content throughout this region, uh, maybe even in the southwest Atlantic, depending on where it ends up, that we could be looking at, if it does not get sheared, this could develop into a very intense hurricane later on. And that is not far from, Mark, why are you saying that, man? Come on. Hey, look at the past, and you'll know. And we can't ignore that. And, and I'm not forecasting that to happen, but the potential is there. The upper ocean heat content is exceptional, and we're going to have this massive ridge built in again over this area, uh, roughly. That's not exactly the outline of it, but you get the idea. And the pattern is headed towards one that's going to be favorable for development in the Caribbean Sea, it does appear. And we can see that reflected here on the Tropical Weather Outlook. 30% chance of development. That will slowly creep up over time. And then in terms of where this ends up, where does it develop, uh, it's hard to say for sure. So we do have just sort of this circle instead of a cone. You know, it just depends on where it's going and how fast it's trying to get there. But that's the general area that the Hurricane Center is thinking. And that's where we have seen many a strong hurricane develop over history, over the, the past. Okay, so please... Pay attention to this. Jamaica, the Cayman Islands. Um, oh, there's the phone beeping at me. You know, rainfall as this you know, starts to grow, etc. We just, we really have to pay attention to these things and treat them the way that they should be treated, and that is a massive weather machine, if you will, that can cause problems even in the formative stages. All right? So we'll be monitoring it very closely, of course, over the next few days. Whoops. I gotta remember to stop this and then go to the first frame. The air conditioning's on. I'm at the Hampton Inn here in uh, Surprise, Arizona, and the air conditioning's on because uh, it's hot and humid. <laughs> well, it's not really hot, but it's humid. It's humid in Arizona. It's like muggy, and uh, my phone is over there beeping across the room. So you know how the iPhone is. It'll message and then it'll do it again, whatever it is, a minute later to remind me. <sighs> All I want is some peace and quiet. So this is the, uh, what is this, the 18Z GFS. Just wanted to give you a look at the pattern more than the specifics here. So let's put this into motion, and then we'll go through what's what. Clearly, you can see Leslie with its vorticity signature nice and round. Not an issue. There's that ridge I was telling you about trying to reestablish itself, and it ebbs and flows over time. And then here is your big monsoon gyre. You can clearly see that counterclockwise turning and this energy trying to do something and consolidate and bundle. And that's the key. If this bundles like we see trying to happen right at the end of the five-day period there, uh, this could turn into something formidable that somebody has to deal with. If we look at that last frame at 120 hours, come on, work with me. Uh, still elongated, obviously. But it's, it's trying. You see the sort of this envelope is getting smaller, getting pinched off. And it's just a matter of where does the low pressure area consolidate. Assuming it does, it's not a 100% chance that it will. I mean, the Hurricane Center's got it at 30. I think that'll go up. And, you know, I've seen the different models out to way out in time. Uh, the European tries to develop it somewhere over here. And it kind of dances around and then heads back towards Florida and different iterations of the GFS, you know, mill around and then try to get it towards Tampa. Yeah, I see all that. And you know what it tells me? It tells me, hey, it's October. This area, if it'll draw, there we go. This area is prime real estate, prime time, you name it, for development. Uh, so it's no surprise. Um, Brian McNulty, I think it was him that tweeted the other day about more hurricanes have impacted, and it may have been major hurricanes. I've tried to get my facts straight. Um, you know, have affected Florida in the month of October, surprisingly to most people, but it's true, and there's a reason behind that. So, please take this uh, seriously in the fact that you know, stay on top of it. 
I'll certainly be talking about it, and I'll give a much clearer rundown on the two different model camps, the GFS and the Euro, when I do my update tomorrow. Right now, I'm just making you aware that I'm on top of it, all right? And we do have a few days. So, look, let me show you a little bit about what I did today. Um, this is over at the Waterman's Wash, and this was this afternoon. This is about a 58-second clip, and I was flying my quadcopter over the flood and then this guy drives up in a big truck you might have seen this already and I look down you can pan the camera down and there he goes and look at that the water is almost up to the bed of his truck and I was like where'd he go where'd he go I was trying to turn the quadcopter over to see him very very dangerous this is not an example that you should follow and he's like sweating it right here uh, I don't know why he stopped but he's lucky. He really is lucky. He could have gotten swept away, and that truck would have turned over on its side, on its right-hand side, and he would have. It would have filled with water, and uh, it would have put a lot of us. I mean, you're not going to. You know, who wants to stand there and watch somebody drown? That would have been horrible. So please don't do stuff like this. I know it's so frustrating to be cut off by flood water. Uh, you know. Believe me, I know I just dealt with it in North Carolina with Florence, but that is not a good example at all uh, to follow. Let me just kind of go back here and this, let's look at his truck. Wait a minute, I want to find it? Yeah, watch. I mean, how high that water is to his truck. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it was past the tires. It, it just wasn't good. So I've got a lot more video like that that I'm going to be processing and I'll post online over the next few days. And I'm going to tell you right now, the documentary that I'm going to put together for this year, it is going to be the best ever. Uh, I'm kind of scared because I've got to come up with some epic music for it. I do the music for my own documentaries, if you didn't know that already. Compose it. Uh, I don't write it down on like staffs you know where I'm actually writing the music but I improvise and come up with chords and melodies and themes and boom I put it together using synthesizers that are older than probably most of the, of the people that watch these videos <laughs> to be honest with you old old synthesizers from the 80s and 90s that I still have back in the day when I thought I was going to be the next Phil Collins or whatever haha -ha. hey it's true that's that's why I play music so music was the hobby, and the hurricane tracking was my career. I had it flipped until about 1992, but that'll be chapter one of the book that I put out someday in the future. But seriously, folks, the documentary I'm going to do, oh, uh, as soon as we get done with all the hurricanes, we probably have one more to get through, I hate to say it, uh, Michael, coming up, I think, then I'll start working on it. I'll put together a trailer and we're going to uh, crowdfund it and it's going to be amazing and it'll be the best one I've ever done and some of the footage that I've captured today will be in there. Remarkable stuff. Alright, I'm going to shut up and get some sleep after I post this and do some other work. Thanks so much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. It's great to be out here in Arizona. A lot of support from Patreon uh, and the, the supporters from there and it's just wonderful to be able to do this for the people uh, I couldn't ask for anything more except some good sleep tonight. You guys have a good evening yourselves. I'm Mark Sadoth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for watching as always. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.